Welcome to the mole concept. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can describe the amount of a substance and how moles are used. In chemistry, we have a unit that we use to count the number of particles in a substance, and we call that the mole. We use moles to represent the number of particles the same way that we would use the term a dozen. So let's start with how we use a dozen, and then we'll work our way to the mole. The term dozen is used as a way of counting. We have a carton of eggs shown here. One carton of eggs has a dozen eggs in it. And we know that a dozen eggs means that we have 12 eggs. Likewise, if I said that we had one dozen people, we would know that that means 12 people. If I then said we have two dozen people, you would automatically know that that means 24 people. So we're using dozen as a way of counting. If you look at the way I phrased these, I said one dozen eggs, one dozen people, two dozen people. If I just said something like, I have a dozen, well that doesn't mean anything. A dozen by itself isn't a unit. It just tells us there's 12 of something. Well, a mole is similar. A dozen indicated 12. Now we have something called a mole, and a mole represents this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. This number is called Avogadro's number. Well, how do we use this number? Well, it's in the name. It's a way of counting. And I said before, it's a way of counting particles, because particles are very small. So we typically end up with very large numbers of them. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is a very large number, which makes it useful for counting particles. Let's see what this looks like. One mole of oxygen is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen, of O2. One mole of carbon dioxide is going to give us 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon dioxide molecules. And as you might imagine, one mole of glucose, C6H12O6, is going to give us 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sugar molecules. And you should remember that C6H12O6 is glucose, or blood sugar, from your biology class. Here are some situations that may come up where we can get some practice with converting between moles and molecules. The first example asks how many molecules are found in half of a mole of a substance. Well, first of all, I know that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So intuitively, if I have half of a mole, I should have half of this number. Half of a mole would be half of this number, which would give me 3.011 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in half a mole. In this second example, we're asked how many moles of carbon dioxide are represented by 1.51 times 10 to the 24th molecules of carbon dioxide. This number is a little trickier to deal with than the half of a mole we had in the previous problem, so I'm going to set this up with dimensional analysis. I'm given 1.51 times 10 to the 24th molecules, and I'm going to multiply that by a fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to have molecules, and on the top of the fraction, I want to get moles, so I'm going to put that there. And I know that one mole represents 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now that I have this set up, I can just take this original number, 1.51 times 10 to the 24th, and divide it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's going to get me 2.5 moles. Now you have to be careful here, it's not enough to just say 2.5 moles, because remember, moles isn't a real unit. It just tells us that we have this many molecules. So our actual unit is moles of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to write that in, moles of CO2. And that would be my complete answer, 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide. You need to put in the substance to fully represent what this quantity is, unless you're not given that information. That wraps up our lesson on the mole concept. 
you have any questions, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.